You might be wondering why you clicked on this video, or why 100% orange juice you buy at the store is still considered artificial, or why I would be reading a calculus textbook at 3 in the afternoon. The answer is, I'm not. I'm on an iPad. After using the iPad for the past few days, I found myself neglecting my MacBook. Now it's not like I didn't want to use it, but it's more like I haven't had the need to. So today I wanted to see if the iPad Pro is sufficient enough for content creation compared to my MacBook Pro. To edit video on anything, you would be needing some software, and on the iPad I have narrowed it down to three, LumaFusion, Adobe Rush, and iMovie. Having used all three of them, I will be sticking to LumaFusion for this video since its editing environment is more familiar to what I'm used to on a Mac. It is however $20, so if you have an Adobe subscription or prefer to stick with something simpler, I'd consider the two other options. The second thing you have to worry about is getting your footage from the DSLR to your iPad. My Canon 70D does not have a USB-C port, and my old Lightning to USB cable is no longer usable. Luckily, my Google Pixel came with a USB-C to USB adapter for transferring data, so that's what I'll be using. After plugging it in, the iPad works rather quickly, pulling up all the photos and videos on the iPad. One of the things I did notice is that there is more footage storage on my SD card than there is storage on my iPad. Since I opted for the lowest storage option, I only have this amount of storage left on my iPad, and that's probably something we should note. After importing all the necessary footage on the iPad, importing them into the timelines was easy enough. When it comes to manipulation of footage, if you don't need any complicated effects, the tools on the app is enough to get the job done. You can even overlay text or use transitions in the app. I really enjoyed the touchscreen aspect of video editing on the iPad. It makes it feel like you're completing a jigsaw puzzle. I also did notice that when scrolling through the footage, there is less stuttering and I can preview my cuts more easily compared to when I'm on my MacBook. But unless you're editing very short videos or can't can't afford a higher storage version of the iPad Pro, you're going to eventually run out of space editing some larger projects that may have some 4K footage. Not to mention if you're one of those people like me that like saving project files. I also wanted to point out that the maxed out iPad Pro at one terabyte is basically the same price as a MacBook Pro. So that's something to think about. Overall, editing on the iPad works really well, especially when it comes to doing short form content or when you're in a pinch while traveling. If you've missed a shot, your iPad can double as a camera and the footage you shoot will be in your camera roll and there's no delay in uploading, so you can add it directly to your timeline. For the more complicated features, there are workarounds. It definitely can get quite tedious though. But for now, at least when it comes to editing video, I will be sticking with my MacBook Pro. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover or questions, leave in the comment section below. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.